This is a review over chapter three. In this video, we're going to go over all the different rules we learned about taking derivatives in this chapter, um, and also some types of problems that they commonly ask. So, starting with section 3.1, we started with the limit definition of a derivative. And first, before we go any further, let's define what, what a derivative is. The derivative is the slope of the tangent line. So, if you remember, in section 2.1, we had to estimate the instantaneous rate of change of a function by plugging in points closer and closer to our point of interest. Here's the math way of how to do that. This is, the derivative is the slope of that tangent line. So when we solve for the derivative and we plug in a point, we're getting the instantaneous rate of change at that specific point without having to plug in all those points closer and closer to our point of interest. Okay, so going back to each section, section 3.1 was the limit definition of a derivative. It gave us these two definitions, one as h approaches 0 and one as x approaches a. And they asked us to calculate the derivative using these uh, definitions, and they gave us some value for a. To do that, we just plugged in our a um, into the function, and we got f of a plus h, wherever we saw an x, minus f of a, wherever we saw an x, all over h. And same thing over here. And we just solved that out. And once you simplify things, you'll get what the derivative is at this point a, or in other words, what the slope of the tangent line is, or what the instantaneous rate of change is at this point a. Okay, but after 3.1, it was great news. We were done with the limit definitions, and we learned the actual math way of how to take the derivative. All right, so from here on out, we're gonna go through the bunch of different rules that we learned. So starting in 3.3, we had our product and our quotient rules. Quotient rule told us that to take the derivative of a function that has a quotient, we go low d high, or derivative of the high, minus high times d low, or derivative of the low, all over low squared, entire thing squared. A uh, thing to remember here is remember you're subtracting this entire quantity here. Since there's a subtraction sign in the middle, our order is really important here, so we need to make sure we do it in low d high minus high d low. And also remember that this negative sign is going to distribute to every term within this quantity. And on the bottom here, remember to square the entire low term, or the entire denominator. Okay, next rule is the product rule. That's if we have two functions being multiplied by each other, and we're taking their derivative. In this one, we take the first function times derivative of the second plus second times derivative of the first. Now here, notice there's a plus sign in the middle. That means that our order doesn't matter here. I could label this one as my first one or this one. Either way, I'll get the same answer. Okay, um, moving on to the next part. We learned how to take the derivative of trig functions. And if you remember, if we have the function sine x, the derivative is cosine x. Derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. And the derivative of tan x is secant squared x. We also learned other derivatives in this section, but I'm just going over the three main ones, which isn't to say that the other ones couldn't be on your test. But I had to be frugal with my space here. So <laughs> here's the three uh, trig derivatives that we're going over. OK. Um, we also learned about chain rule. Chain rule is if we have a function within a function, how do we take the derivative of that? Chain rule tells us to start with the outermost function, take that derivative, and then work our way inside and multiply by each inner function derivative. So if I have f on my outside, I have f of g of x taking the derivative. I'll start with my outside function and take derivative of f of x times, moving on to my inside function, g of x, times the derivative of g of x. OK, and in the next part, in section 3.9, we learn derivatives of exponential and log functions. If we have the function ln of x, the derivative of that is just 1 over x. If we have the derivative of e to the x, it's just the same, e to the x. And if we have a function in the term b to the x, the derivative of this is just ln b, whatever that base is, times b to the x, whatever we started with. Okay, this was a ton of rules. Let's apply some of them. One in a chain rule function, 
or question in one with implicit differentiation, which was section 3.8. Okay, chain rule. This is a problem I made up. I was trying to get a bunch of rules in there, so hopefully I did. We're given this function. We need to find the derivative of it. Well, we notice that we have a function within a function. Whenever you see a radical, you can just rewrite that as um, an exponent. So I'm going to rewrite this so it's easier to see. I have this entire quantity raised to the one half power. So first, with my chain rule, I'm going to identify what my outside function is and what my inside function is. My outside function here is something raised to the one half power. To take the derivative of something raised to the one half, I'll need to use my power rule. And now moving on to my inside, I have negative 2 sine x times ln x. To take the derivative of this thing, I'll need to use my product rule. Okay, so starting with my outside function for chain rule, I get the derivative of something raised to the one half is using my power rule, one half times that same something, all raised to the negative one half. And now moving inside, I have uh, this inside part here. Remember, I said to take the derivative of this inside, I'm going to use my product rule. And product rule tells me to take the first times derivative of the second plus second times derivative of the first. So what I get when I do that is my first minus 2 sine x times derivative of my second. Oh, I switched colors. That's okay. Derivative of ln x is just 1 over x plus my second times derivative of the first. Derivative of sine x is plus cosine x. But remember, I still have this minus 2 in the front. That'll just stay there. Um, so this becomes minus 2 cosine x. Okay, and I could simplify all this out, but that's the basic idea of how to solve for this derivative, f prime of x. Okay, um, next example we're going to go through is a problem with implicit differentiation. Remember, implicit differentiation, we have to do that whenever we can't solve for one variable. I could try to change this function around, but I'd never be able to get just y equals something, right? I'd never be able to just isolate all the y's on one side. So what I do here is I take the derivative of the entire thing. And the way I like to think about this is I'm distributing this derivative to each term. So on the left here, I have dy over dx plus this is y to the minus 1. The derivative of y to the minus 1 will be ln y. Uh, but remember, we have to keep our dy over dx here. And then equals on the right side, um, derivative of x squared is just 2x. But remember, I have dx over dx plus derivative of x is just 1. So that's 1 times dx over dx. Okay. But remember, dx over dx, that's just the same thing over itself. So you can cross that out because that's just 1. So now I have dy over dx plus ln y dy over dx equals 2x plus 1. I'm solving for my derivative or my dy over dx. So what I'm doing from here is I'll take out my dy over dx and solve for it like I would a normal equation. I take out my dy over dx. I'm left with on this side 1 plus ln y is equal to my same right side, 2x plus 1. And now I just divide this over, and I get that dy over dx is equal to 2x plus 1 over 1 plus ln y. And that's my slope. Okay, so last thing is in each of these sections, a lot of times they ask us to find the equation of a tangent line using the derivative rules we just learned. So remember, if we're finding the equation of a line, we need two things. We need one, the slope, and we'll need a point on the line. This entire chapter is about derivatives. The way we find the slope is with the derivative. Because remember, the derivative is a slope of the tangent line. So we find derivative. Um, when we first find the derivative, like what we just found here, that's just the general form of the slope. See, I still have variables in my derivative functions, so I could plug in any variable I want and find the slope um, at that exact point. When I'm finding the equation of a tangent line, they always give me a point. 
So for slope, I'll need to find with the derivative the point that's just given. So once I find the general form of the derivative, I plug in my point, um, and that'll give me the slope at a specific point. All right, so once I have my slope at this specific point, I have my slope, I was given a point, and now I can just use one of these two equations of the line to find my equation of the tangent line. Okay, there is a whole lot going on here, but um, hopefully this was a good review over all the derivative rules. Don't forget, there's also a section on word problems in 3.4, so that's also a good one to review. Um, good study tips for calculus tests is, one, try to make just like a one-page review over the main concepts in the chapter, kind of maybe something like this. And two, uh, review your homework problems. That's where your teachers are going to base their test questions off of. So look through the problems. Don't actually solve all of them because that would take forever. Um, but try to go through mentally the process of how you would solve each problem. If you get to ones that you don't know how to solve, look back in the section, look back at your notes uh, to try to remember or try to figure out how to solve it and solve it out by hand. Um, and just focus on those problem areas where you weren't able to just walk through it step by step in your mind. If you have further questions, remember, we have our tutoring center, first floor of Sid Rich. Come by whenever we're open and we'll have a calculus tutor. Hope this was helpful and good luck. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts covered in this video are true no matter what calculus class you're in, but all the sections and problems I referenced were from this textbook right here. And remember that if you're a registered Baylor student, we offer free tutoring on the first floor of Sid Rich. You can either schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment online or just drop in whenever you're available during our business hours for free tutoring. For more information, feel free to visit our website.